Well, one possible benefit of the COVID-19 lockdown is that it gives creative minds uh, like mine plenty of time to come up with great new uh, ideas. So frustrating, isn't it, that it takes such a long time uh, to drink a drink. Well, no longer. Prepare to be amazed by Chef Ben's quick drink delivery system, or quibbidits, as I like to call it. So here's my delicious drink of uh, Coca-Cola. Can't wait uh, to get stuck into this. Yum, yum, yum. Need some of the special uh, Coca-Cola delivery pills, uh, which you can get at any good uh, pharmacy. Oh, that is so <coughs> refreshing. Thank goodness for quibbits. Let's take a look at that again, shall we? But I wonder what would happen if we try this with something else. So you probably sussed out uh, that clean living athletic types uh, like me don't really drink Coca-Cola uh, very often. So I'm much more interested in finding out where the kibbutz works with a drink that I like much more. Uh, here it is, some iced tea. Are you ready to be amazed? I certainly am. Let's get our kubudits pills ready uh, for this quick drink delivery and let's see uh, what happens. Are you ready? Let's go. Just a minute. Let's give it a bit of a stir, maybe that. Hmm. Doesn't seem to work, does it? Perhaps it only works with Coca Cola. Perhaps it only works. Uh, with the real thing. What we're going to discover this morning is that Christianity only works with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Take the raising of Jesus Christ from the dead out of Christianity and the whole thing falls to bits. Christianity only works with the real resurrection of Jesus. Let's drill into that. Let's find out exactly what that means right now. The idea of a Jesus who doesn't rise from the dead is something that appeals to both Christians and non-Christians uh, alike. Why is that the case? Well, of course, we live in a world where people don't rise from the dead. And for many people, the resurrection is so hard to believe that it is straight up embarrassing. That was certainly the case for David Jenkins, who was the Bishop of Durham in the 1980s and early 90s. According to the tabloid newspapers, he straight out denied the resurrection, although he always maintained that this wasn't really the case. And so the tabloids were very excited when just a few days after his consecration as bishop, York Minster was struck by lightning and very, very badly burned, something they saw as a sign from God. Of course, it's not just uh, Christians who often would like to see Jesus as someone who didn't rise from the dead. Uh, atheists as well quite like the idea of Jesus as someone who didn't rise from the dead. Uh, Richard Dawkins, the very famous atheist, for example, said that somebody as intelligent as Jesus would have been an atheist. They'd like to be able to reclaim Jesus without the miraculous. But is it even possible to see Jesus as good and worthwhile if he didn't rise from the dead? According to Paul in our reading from 1 Corinthians, that's impossible. Let's see why. So in the early 90s, the publishers Bloomsbury weren't up to very much. That is, until they picked up the publication deal of the century, the publication of the Harry Potter books. That transformed them into a multinational enormous publishing company. And so in 2014, with great trepidation, 
I approached them about publishing one of my books. I had to write a research proposal for them. Here it is, here's the book, and you can see it says Bloomsbury uh, at the bottom. So that tells you this story has a happy ending. My book, written to serve the use of scripture in 1 Peter. I know it's such a great title, isn't it? Well, my book proposal had to say how great I was, how I was uniquely qualified to write this book, that I knew more about the subject than anyone else, perhaps in the world. I had to prove that I had a great track record looking over my previous publications and singing the praises of my last book, David being a prophet to the contingency of scripture upon history in the New Testament. Sounds so fascinating, doesn't it? Don't you like the cover uh, as well? I had to prove that I had the track record to be reliable enough to justify their expense of thousands of pounds of their money on my book project. Well, according to Paul, the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves the track record of Jesus. It guarantees all of his promises. And if we ditch the resurrection, we have no real reason to believe that Jesus offers us anything Without the resurrection, Jesus offers nothing. So Paul was writing to people who didn't believe that anyone could be raised from the dead. And this is what he has to say in verse 16. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who've fallen asleep in Christ have perished. In other words, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, there's no real reason to believe that Jesus can forgive us our sins or provide a way for us to everlasting life. The resurrection proves the track record of Jesus. It proves that he is uniquely able to provide the things that he promises. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He says of himself, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus promises that when we come to him, we will find forgiveness of our sins. He promises to die in our place as a ransom for many. Of course, promises like that are very easy to make. I could make those kind of promises to you uh, today, promises that I will forgive you uh, for your sins or that if you follow me, you'll go to heaven. But there's no way I can substantiate those promises. There's no way I can prove that I have the authority and power to deliver on those promises. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ does just that. It proves that he was really meaningful when he said, I can forgive you. I will die in your place. Follow me and you'll have life in all of its fullness. The resurrection proves that Jesus is able to deliver on the promises that he has made to us. But without the resurrection, Jesus Christ offers us nothing. Take that away and the authority of Jesus and the promises of Jesus are just words. So you might now be thinking, hang on a minute, what about Jesus' teaching? Surely Jesus was still a great moral teacher, even if he didn't rise from the dead. Sure, Jesus might not be able to offer us everlasting life and forgiveness of sins and heaven, but he still said things that are worth hearing, didn't he? Well, according to Paul, that is not true. He says this, if in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. In other words, there's no reason to trust in Jesus or follow him or value him without his resurrection. Why on earth would he say that? Well, Jesus made many extraordinary claims about his authority. He said, before Abraham was, I am, claiming to be older than Abraham and of the same age as God, claiming then to be God. And he said about himself this, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. 
Now, what sort of a person makes claims like that about himself? Well, according to the author and Oxford professor C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Narnia books, only three types of people can make claims like that about themselves. This is what he has to say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says he's a poached egg or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronising nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. C.S. Lewis says either Jesus is who he says he is, or he's deranged, or he's evil. What kind of a person would make the claims Jesus makes about himself? Jesus claimed to be able to rise again from the dead. If he didn't do that, he is either a liar or a lunatic. C.S. Lewis says, you make your choice. What do you make of Jesus Christ? As Paul says, if in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. So there we have it. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christianity falls apart. Without the resurrection, Jesus offers us nothing. Without the resurrection, Paul says, Jesus isn't worth following. This is why Easter is so important. I wonder what you make of the evidence for Jesus' resurrection. You can find out more about that by listening again to our uh, service last Sunday, which looks a little bit of the evidence from the beginning of 1 Corinthians 15. But that's only a small bit of the evidence. A great way to explore this in more detail is to read uh, this book. This is The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. This is actually the youth edition uh, of the book. There's a children's version, a youth one, and an adult's uh, version. And the adult's version, I'll leave a, a link to where you can buy it in the description under this video on, on YouTube. Uh, Lee Strobel is an investigative journalist with lots of great journalistic skills. He's unconvinced of the resurrection when he begins writing the book and he goes to uh, speak to lots of different experts and looks at the evidence for the resurrection in great uh, detail. But despite the detail, it's a really gripping and very easily accessible read. So I commend that to you. Uh, do have a look at that if you want to explore the evidence for the resurrection in more detail. Hopefully now you can see why it is so important. Let me pray as we finish. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much that Jesus was raised from the dead. And because of that, we can be sure that our sins are forgiven when we trust in him. And that when we follow him, he leads us to everlasting life. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.